got our next patient here this morning, and we're going to call you Jefferson. We're going to give you a name. And you're about 400 pounds, a little bit over. How much do you weigh? Um, this is the first time I've been told I was over 400. No kidding. Yeah. All right. And you've had this breakdown uh, in the skin here that's been going on for a while. You've been applying bacitracin to it, and it doesn't seem to be getting better, right? No, this is much better than what it has been in the past. My leg swelled. My I see. entire leg was about the size of my calf. Okay, now what I'm talking about though are the sores. The Much better sores. now than what they have been in the past. All right, have they actually had any pus come out of them or anything yes. like that? Yes. All right, so what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna get a wound culture. I suspect you might have a bacterial infection, yes. but I think the big problem is, is the bacitracin. And I see this sometimes in people that are using bacitracin or they're using neosporin frequently on wounds they have a hard time healing. And it's not because they don't do a good job uh, being antibacterial, because they do. The problem is is that the, uh, the heavy petroleum base that these products have uh, sometimes causes a local skin irritation and it slows the healing. So what I recommend people do is just use those kind of products for a day or two when they have an initial abrasion, but beyond that, not to continue using it unless they're directed by their doctor. Anyway, so we're going to do a culture and we're going to get you on some antibiotics and have you stop using the bacitracin and I bet you we can clear this up. Okay. Alright man, thanks for letting us uh, show Hey guys, we're back with Jefferson. If you remember, he was in a, a week or so ago, was three it? Not last week? Three, three weeks ago. Three, yeah. And uh, we had the leg thing we talked about and one of the things we were concerned was that we were using a lot of neosporin uh, or was it bacitracin? Bacitracin. It was bacitracin, yeah. yeah. And uh, we talked about how sometimes that can cause some problems where wounds don't want to heal. And if you look at the old video and compare it to this one, you can see we've had a tremendous amount of healing. We're probably just a couple of weeks away from most of this healing, except maybe for this one over here. It's going to take a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah, looks real good. And so the big thing was we stopped using the... Uh, the ointments, right? Or exactly. The, yeah, products. Well, good deal. Thanks for letting us take another pick at this. A lot of people, uh, pick at it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, picture nice. of it. Yeah, there's a lot of people wanted to see a follow up. They were like, hey, how did Jefferson do? How's that leg looking? And uh, so here you go. All right, man, thanks. That was about six months ago. Okay, folks, we're back with our pal Jefferson. You might remember uh, he came in, he had uh, some leg wounds, and we talked and found out he was using a lot of uh, over the counter antibiotic ointments. And we really felt like it was contributing to some of these wounds not healing, but it looks like they've mostly healed up now. We've got a couple of different breakdowns. Tell us, tell us what's going on, Mr. Jefferson. Well, I've stopped using the medication. I just covered it with a with a bandage, and then over the last couple of days, every so often the adhesive would cause me to itch. Yeah. So one one night, sort of in mm -hmm. the middle of going to sleep, uh, reached down and scratched my leg, and it just the that mm -hmm. top layer of skin just sort of sloughed off. Mm -hmm. So. Right. I've been watching it some more closely. Those just came up within the last couple of days, and I'm going to yep. bandage those again like we did before. Okay. This one was the one that was really deep from the mm -hmm. last video, right? and uh, it's all the way back to nice, fresh, clean skin there. So I'm, Looks I'm much, much that. better. That yeah. is for sure. Let's take a look at the other leg. Can we do so that? This one, yeah, this one was one. I, this is an 18-year-old injury that I suffered in my leg years and years at that time ago. And this one, it develops a scar here, and then when I sweat... This mm -hmm. leg, the the skin, the scar tissue on the top mm -hmm. will bubble up, and mm -hmm. once it once it once it dries, it'll just flake off. One morning, I'll be take, I'll get out of the shower, I'll wash my leg and dry it off, and when I do, this just comes right off. No kidding. So yeah, as a matter of fact, this came off yesterday morning. Mm -hmm. You can see this is the dry flaking that we're talking about. Yeah. And it's a I mean for for anybody out there who might scratch or pick their wounds or anything like that. I can tell you that it's best just to leave those on there. It's really tempting just to reach down there and grab it, but I could tear another layer of skin off right there and start another wound yeah. or an infection. Right. And I damn sure don't need that. No, so. no. Now, your your skin on your legs, we can see you've got lots of little scars here. Yeah, oh yeah. So you, that's you've, from, had, you've had a lot of trouble. You, have, you seem to have thinner skin. But I want to show folks one more thing. Yeah. Put your legs straight for me. Uh, if I push on this, mm -hmm. you can see we're going we're gonna to end up making a little dimple here. Does that hurt? Nope. Okay. And you can see you've got what we would say is two plus pitting edema. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One could be the amount of salt in your diet. One could be circulation in your leg. Mm -hmm. Another could be uh, your weight. Mm -hmm. Another could be uh, your you know heart problems. So, so this can be a sign of a lot of different things going on. 
in your particular case, I think it's probably weight related and probably some circulation related. I don't think that you have a heart issue. At least we haven't uh, we haven't uh, discovered any problems there. So um, in your particular case, one of the things that we would do is we would say uh, exercise more often, sure. uh, lose some weight, mm -hmm. and avoid really salty foods. We, okay. we would we would uh, work on all those different areas and uh, to make progress. And I think that if we could get some weight off of you and therefore, uh, and thereby kind of work on getting some of the fluid off, you would heal better. How about a compression hose or a support? A compression, stuff? yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay. That's another thing that we can do. It doesn't fix the problem, but no, it, no. what it does do is it kind of helps squeeze the fluid out. Okay. So today I can write you a prescription for uh, compression stockings. Okay. What I like to use are the Jopes brand, mm -hmm. but really any uh, compression stocking, uh, I like to use the uh, just under the knee and about 10 to 15 millimeter or mercury pressure is uh, okay. usually a really good choice. Okay. Jefferson, man, thanks for sharing this with everybody. Man, glad uh, to do it. They're going to be real glad that you guys uh, out there are getting a real treat, getting a follow up on on Jefferson. I'm gonna go back over here and just once again, when where you came in before, there's there were everything was open, you were oozing and everything through here, awesome. yeah, it was really bad. And it was uh, a lot of that was attributable to the uh, the Neosporin or uh, Bacitrace, the combination of medication, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah those. Uh, um, Triple antibiotics. And sure, mm -hmm. the heavy petroleum base tends yes. to really irritate the skin. All right, bud, thanks. You're welcome. I can't remember if we talked about your weight loss, but you've lost how much weight so far? Uh, 162 pounds. 162 pounds, yes, and we've done that over less than two years now, but it's we're- just, It's almost three years. March will be three years. Three March. years, is yeah. that Believe long? it or not, it's been 1,006 one days because my fitness pal app tells me that. Yeah. That okay. I'm logging in every day. So we started out with a, uh, a little diet program for you because you wanted to lose a lot of weight. You were yes. tremendously overweight. Look at you now, you look like, you know, <laughs> you look like a Greek statue. I was you just I was, look fabulous. I was heavier than your scales will would weigh. That's right. I yeah. was, your, your scales only went, only went up to four. Which is crazy, but and my scale at home didn't even go that high. My scale at home would only read a 380, and I thought I was 380 the whole time. Yeah. And then I get here, and 400 shows up, and then I finally get on another scale, and I find out I was 420. Wow. So it's yeah. You were ready to make a big change, and so you and didn't. Yeah. You didn't just go on a diet. You you actually made a lifestyle change. Well, yeah. You, you originally recommended that I go talk to a, another physician close by about having their stomach stapling or some other yeah, uh, procedure right. and I was like, you know, I don't even have any tattoos, much less do right. anything permanent to my body. Is there any other way? And you said, yeah, well, we can do this and we can put you on medication. You can lose 20 pounds a month for the, for the first couple of months. You know, you, and we'll put you on my fitness pal. And right. uh, of course you had started me on Meta7, which right. I, I've taken, I can't, I can probably imagine maybe 10 days in the last two and a half years that I haven't taken. Okay. Um, every almost every day. So. So we did a combination yeah. of things. We did. Yeah. We did Meta Seven. We did My Fitness Pal, which is a free app yes. for your phone, and we used a, a diet medication to yes. help kind of control your appetite. Okay. Yes, and you dropped 162 pounds. Your yes. body mass index was over 40. You were morbidly obese. And that's what we call that when your body mass index is over 40. So when I have a patient whose BMI is over 40, that generates an automatic referral to see a bariatric surgeon. And that's why I did that for you. You are the exception. You're not the rule. Okay. Okay. Most people in your situation are not able to do what you've done. So, so you've really taken this... Uh, and made it your own. I'm gonna say that because I have a lot of patients that'll come in and want to lose some weight and I'm, ha I'm always willing to help um, and generally speaking what happens is is they lose some weight then they sort of lose interest a few months later and then the weight comes back and, yeah. and then we start talking about okay are you ready to really make some lifestyle changes things like that but you really you really made this your own you kept it going yeah um, have you had any particular problems besides having to buy new clothes all the time <laughs> that's it that's yeah. it I went from a 3x large pants because uh, I wear scrubs every day which is really easy to hide right. all kinds of weight I went from a 3X now I'm down to wearing a large, and I went from a 4XL shirt down to an extra large. That's amazing. And I'm a, I'm 6'4", I weigh, right now I weigh 252, right. and uh, the math was wrong, unfortunately. I, I lost 168 pounds. So 160 420 pounds. down to 252. So, That's, yeah. it, it gets more amazing. So <laughs> yeah. so uh, your goal weight, is it, is it right around 200 or 220? I was thinking, so my, the BMI charts say that I should weigh in 208, 210 range, right. if I'm not mistaken. I never, I, I felt in the past, I felt much more comfortable around 225 and 230. Mm -hmm. So I was shooting for lower than that, expecting that there may be some sort of a rebound. But right. in the last month, since you introduced me to Proteinaholics, which right. is the other, I mean, which yeah. is another big thing, I, it's that's right. broken through so many of the myths that I've believed my whole life. Isn't and, it amazing? 
it's so show the book, and, and I've been recommending this to a lot of patients. You went ahead and got the hardback version. Uh, yes. Dr. Garth Davis, uh, Dr. Davis, if you ever see my videos, I want to meet you, my friend. Yeah. Uh, I've recommended, I'm probably responsible for a hundred sales of your copies of your books. Yeah. But uh, the uh, he does a beautiful job of really introducing uh, a whole food, plant based lifestyle and why it's so important. He does a yeah. fantastic job of, of telling us why. We're killing ourselves with what we eat. That's right. And so for you, what I'm hoping is is that when we get you to that final goal, that this will be sort of a real lifestyle that you can step into where you can maintain. Yeah. Because we did have a, a, a one little episode where you went off the program for a little while and, yeah. you, and your weight jumped back up quite a bit and then we had to really redouble down, right? I absolutely did, yeah. Okay. And I, it, it, during, I can remember during that month, I kept thinking... Yeah, but don't worry about it. You'll lose it again. You'll lose it again. Don't right. worry about it. And I just, it, I, I kick myself now thinking, had I not done that, I you would already get my goal yeah. Yeah. Or, or more than that. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, when you, when, you know, do you feel that you've become a new person? Absolutely. I'm, I, I go home now and at night I look for things to do instead of looking for a place to plot down and fall asleep after supper. Right. You know, I, I worked out this morning for 45 minutes doing cardio before I came here. It's wow. 8 o'clock in the morning now. That's awesome. Um, hey folks, you spoke and we listened. Here's what you had to say about Meta7. I love it so much. It gives me so much energy during the day. I've noticed a change in my hair, my nails, my blood pressure. There's no doubt that it, it's, it's a benefit to me. It gives me more stamina. And it could actually help you lose weight. Now, I haven't taken a nap in six months. That's right, Meta7. More and more people are sending in their testimonials. Weight loss, more energy, and generally feeling more alert during the day. Let's hear more. I used it to help wean myself off caffeine and energy drinks, and my productivity has been very high lately. It's natural, it's amazing. I feel motivated to get out and do things that I didn't before. I'm not tired during the day. I've worked 12 hour shifts. I just go, go, go all day. It makes me feel great, I love it, and um, take it. It's wonderful stuff. If you haven't tried Meta7 yet, it's time to order yours from Amazon. Time to boost your metabolism and kick your energy level into high gear. There's an Amazon link in the description. Hey Dr. Gilmore fans, we're looking for volunteers who would like to be featured in a future Dr. Gilmore video. If you're a happy Meta7 customer, send us your honest testimonial videos. Send them to the email address below. And you could be featured on a future Dr. Gilmore video.